We'll call it high-flying art on an unusual canvas. Ian McAbee is never bored when he's aboard an airplane. <laughs> sure not. CTV Joel Haslam with the story of inspiration in the sky. Joel. Well, Michael and Patricia, you won't find Ian McAbee's artistic creations in a gallery. He doesn't have a studio and his canvases are, well, different. But his drawings are a real trip inspired by many of his own. An airport isn't just about travel. Sure, it helps people get from one city to another. But sometimes the most profound journeys aboard airplanes lead passengers to a place of self-discovery, a realization about who they are and what they're meant to do. I don't know of anyone that does this, so that's partly why I do it too. It's odd, it's different, it's quirky, it's neat, and, but it's, it's a talent and I'm proud of them. That was a quick cab ride. I'm Ian so and Tina Maccabee are frequent flyers. Somewhere. We travel everywhere. I travel a lot with my wife a lot of times by myself as well. Oh, we got an hour before we board. North America, uh, Europe. So I think we're good. For business and so. pleasure, the couple spends a lot of time in the sky. Most of the flights that I take average between four hours to ten, sometimes as long as twelve hours. And while they travel a lot, Tina admits to being a bit of a nervous flyer. So I need to be just plugged in, music, and I'm good. So on one flight, while plugging in her headphones, she suggested Ian find a creative outlet to help pass the time. And I said, you know, why don't you just draw a picture or something? And he said, well, what am I going to draw on? And there it was, right? in front of him. And he's looking through the back of the seats of the airplane. And he says, okay, how about this? And what I'm grabbing is I'm grabbing an air sickness bag. That? I said, well, you know what? If it keeps you quiet and keeps you busy, go for it. What took off that day? Ian's passion for pencil on a handy, albeit unconventional, canvas. I've drawn, I'd say, well over 200 pictures on these bags, taking something that's rather not pleasant, turning it into something that's actually a nice work of art to look at. Art reflecting Ian's travels, every trip an inspiration. If I'm flying over Alberta or Winnipeg or over the prairies, I tend to draw a lot of farmlands. If I'm over Europe, I do a lot of castles and such. So it always depends on where I'm going. When Ian starts a drawing, reaches for that bag. They think that I'm going to be sick. But by flight's end, they're tossing their compliments. Very often, they'll say, this is amazing, this is incredible, this looks really, really neat. Flight attendants post the art inside the cabin, even slip Ian free drinks to show their admiration for his work. And then at the end of the flight, normally I'll give them the bag for being nice to me. Art for beer. Yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it works out great. I'm gonna have to get a pencil sharpener soon. His biggest fan is Tina. Do you think he should have an air sickness bag art show? Yes. <laughs> Don't know how, but yes. Or maybe airlines could print Ian's work on those bland white bags, give travelers a more pleasant reason to grab one. People might even start collecting them. Who knows? In Ian's sky of dreams, there is no limit. For now, it's a hobby, and I enjoy it very much. And to those future passengers who may need a bag for its intended purpose. There's quite a big possibility that maybe I've already grabbed it and used it for drawing. So you're apologizing in advance. Yes, yes, yes. Well, Ian is never sure what will inspire his next creation. In fact, during our short time with him, he produced this beautiful drawing of the Bell Media Building right here in the Byward Market. Mike, Patricia? I'll leave it on your desk. Merry Christmas. <laughs> nice. Wow. Pretty talented, and uh, I have to toss a compliment Joel's way on the writing, too. That was pretty good.